again and welcome back to the story shack with me Kat and Sloppy the rabbit and today we have a lovely story from the Philippines and it's called the silver shower every night in Manila which is the capital city in the Philippines when the bells of the city boom out the Angelus and lights begin to appear in the windows the walks are filled with people hurrying towards the bay in the streets, hundreds of carriages, their lamps twinkling like fireflies, speed quickly by as the cacheros urge on the little Filipino ponies. All are bound for the Luneta to hear the evening concert. The Luneta is a really pretty place, the garden spot of the city. It's laid out in an oval formation and its green lawns are covered with benches for the people. A broad driveway surrounds it and hundreds of electric lights transform the night into day. A bandstand is located at the each end of the oval and at night concerts are given by the military bands. Thousands of people gather to listen to the music. The bright uniforms of officers and men, the white dresses of American ladies, the black mantillas of the dark-eyed senoritas, and the brightly coloured blouses of the Filipino girls show that the beauty and style of Manila has assembled at the concert. The band plays many beautiful selections and finally closes with the Star Spangled Banner. At once, every head is bared and all stand to attention until the song is finished. And then the musicians disperse, the carriages drive away and all the people return to their homes. Many, however, linger on the benches or stroll along the beach watching the water curling up on the shore as the waves reach the land a soft light seems to spring from them and to break into thousands of tiny stars now and then someone idly skips a stone over the water and where it touches a little fountain of liquid fire springs upwards and the water ripples away in gleaming circles that growing wider and wider finally disappear in a flash of silvery light. Of all the beauties of the islands, the water of Manila Bay at night ranks among the best. And those who ask why it flashes and why it glows in this way are told the story of the silver shower that saved the Pasig villagers from the Moro Dato Bung Tao. And here's the story. Hundreds of years ago, Messengers came hurrying from the south of Luzon with the news that the great Dato Bung Tao, with many ships and men, was on his way to the island to burn the villagers and carry the people away into slavery. Great fear came into the hearts of the people, for the fierce Dato was the terror of the eastern seas, and all the southern islands were reported captured. Nevertheless, they resolved to defend their homes and save their people from shame and from slavery. The news proved true, for the Moro chief landed a great army on the shore of the Bay of Batangas, and his fierce followers with fire and sword started north to lay waste to the country. For a time, they destroyed everything before them, but soon Luzon was up in arms against them, and great numbers of warriors hurried southward to battle with the Moros. All the local tribes, Tagalos, Macabebes, Igorotes and Pangasinanes forgot about all their differences and they all joined forces to hurry southward in their thousands. The Moros presently found themselves blocked by a large army of men determined to save their homes or to die fighting. Near the present town of Imus in Cavite, a battle was fought and the Moros were finally defeated. They then retreated southward, but great numbers of Vicoles and Tinguanes rushed up from the southern part of the island and blocked their way. And on the shore of Great Lake Bonbon, the final battle was fought. The Moros were killed to a man. And with great rejoicing, all the tribes returned north and south to their homes. But in the meantime, Bung Tao had not been idle. After landing his men, with his 200 ships, he set sail northward, never doubting that his army would sweep all before it. A typhoon carried his fleet far south into the China Sea, 
but he steered again for Luzon and three weeks later was in sight of Corregidor Island. He sailed down Manila Bay and drew up his fleet in front of the villages on the Pasig River, the present site of Manila. On the shore, the people gathered in terror for all the warriors had gone to fight the invading army and only old men and women and children remained in the villages now. So hastily they called a meeting and finally they decided to send a messenger out to the model chief with all the gold and things of value that they possessed, thinking thus to satisfy the fierce Datto and save their villagers from harm. And so all the women gave their rings and their bracelets and all the men their bangles and chains and everything of value was taken from the houses. Even the temples of prayer were stripped and all of the ornaments were taken. So great was the fear of the people that they even sent their gold statue of the great god Capitan that was the pride of the tribe whose members came miles to worship. As Bang Tao was preparing to land and attack the town with his sailors, the messenger in his canoe came alongside the ship and was at once taken before the Datto. Trembling with fear, the old man, using signs and gestures, begged for mercy for the people on the shore. He pointed to the presents and he offered them to Bung Tao and then placing the golden image of Capitan at the feet of the moral and bowing low, he pleaded again for the women and the children. Bung Tao just laughed in his face. On his island, there was enough gold to satisfy his people. He needed slaves to work in the fields. For it was beneath the dignity of such warriors as himself and his companions to work. So he kicked the messenger away from him. And with a curse, he picked up the sacred golden image and he threw it far over the water. Instantly, the sky grew dark and black as night covered the land. The messenger felt himself seized by invisible hands and carried to the shore. And then suddenly the heavens opened and a shower of silver fire rained down onto the Moro boats. In vain the Moros tried to escape. The fire hemmed them in on every side. Many leapt from the burning ships into the boiling water and when the darkness cleared the Moros and their boats had all disappeared. Joyfully, the people on the shore ran to the temple to worship and pray to Capitan. Imagine their surprise when they found the golden image of the god was back in its usual place. And around it, all of the bracelets and the rings and all of the valuables that the villagers had offered to the Moros were all there. When the warriors a few days later returned from their great victory in the south, they could hardly believe the story of the wonderful escape of their people. But at night, when they saw the usually dull waters dashing and breaking on the shore in crystals of silvery light, they knew it was Capitan who had saved their homes and families. The villages are a thing of the past. The modern city of Manila now stands on the banks of the Pasig. The nights here are very beautiful. The breeze sighs softly through the palm trees and the golden moon gleams on the waters of Manila Bay. On the shore, the waves break gently and little balls of silver light go rushing up the beach. And wise man say that the sparkling water is caused by phosphorus. But that's because they've never heard the story of the silver shower. See you next time.